Flying Car, Wikipedia Audio A flying car is a type of personal air vehicle that provides door-to-door -door transportation by both ground and air. The term flying car is often used to include rotable aircraft and hover cars. Many prototypes have been built since the first years of the 20th century, but PAL V Liberty has reached production status now available. Their appearance is often predicted by futurologists, with their failure ever to reach production leading to the catchphrase, Where's my flying car? History Flying cars are also a popular theme in fantasy and science fiction stories. In 1926, Henry Ford displayed an experimental single-seat aeroplane that he called the Sky Fliver. The project was abandoned two years later when a distance record attempt flight crashed, killing the pilot. The Fliver was not a flying car at all, but it did get press attention at the time, exciting the public that they would have a mass-produced affordable airplane product that would be made, marketed, sold, and maintained just like an automobile. The airplane was to be as commonplace in the future as the Model T of the time. In 1940, Henry Ford famously predicted, Mark my word, a combination airplane and motor car is coming. You may smile, but it will come. The aerocar designed and built by Mold Taylor made a successful flight in December 1949, and in following years versions underwent a series of road and flying tests. Chuck Berry featured the concept in his 1956 song You Can't Catch Me, and in December 1956 the Civil Aviation Authority approved the design for mass production, but despite wide publicity and an improved version produced in 1989, Taylor did not succeed in getting the flying car into production. In the period between 1956 to 1958, Ford S. Advanced Design Studio built the Volante Triathodyne, a 3 8 scale concept car model. It was designed to have three ducted fans, each with their own motor, that would lift it off the ground and move it through the air. In public relation release, Ford noted that the day where there will be an aero car in every garage is still some time off but added that the Volante indicates one direction that the styling of such a vehicle would take. In 1957, Popular Mechanics reported that Hiller Helicopters was developing a duct fan aircraft that would be easier to fly than helicopters, and should cost a lot less. Hiller engineers expected that this type of an aircraft would become the basis for a whole family of special-purpose aircraft. In 1956, the U.S. Army's Transportation Research Command began an investigation into flying jeeps, duct fan-based aircraft that were envisioned to be smaller and easier to fly than helicopters. In 1957, Chrysler, Curtis Wright, and Piasetsky were assigned contracts for building and delivery of prototypes. They all delivered their prototypes. However, Piasetsky's VZ-8 was the most successful of the three. While it would normally operate close to the ground, it was capable of flying to several thousand feet, proving to be stable in flight. Nonetheless, the Army decided that the flying jeep concept unsuitable for the modern battlefield, and concentrated on the development of conventional helicopters. In addition to the Army contract, Piasetsky was developing the Sky Car, a modified version of its VZ-8 for civilian use. In the mid-1980s, former Boeing engineer, Fred Barker, founded Flight Innovations Inc. and began the development of the Sky Commuter, a small duct fans-based VTOL aircraft. It was a compact, 14-foot-long two-passenger and was made primarily of composite materials. In 2008, 
the remaining prototype was sold for £86,000 on eBay. In 1942, the Soviet armed forces experimented with a gliding tank, the Antonov A-40, but it was not capable of flying on its own. Early Developments Aeromobile currently fly tests a prototype that obtained Slovak Ultralight certification. When the final product will be available or how much it will cost is not yet specified. Urban Aeronautics X-Hawk is a VTOL turbojet-powered aircraft announced in 2006 with a first flight planned for 2009. It was intended to operate much like a tandem rotor helicopter, but with ducted fans rather than exposed rotors. The requisite decrease in rotor size would also decrease fuel efficiency. The X-Hawk was being promoted for rescue and utility functions. As of 2013, no flights had been reported. Terrafugia have a flying road vehicle, the Terrafugia transition on May 7, 2013, Terrafugia announced the TFX, a plug-in hybrid tilt rotor vehicle that would be the first fully autonomous flying car. It would have a range of 500 miles per flight and batteries are rechargeable by the engine. Development of TFX is expected to last 8-12 years, which means it will not come to market before 2021-2025. The Mahler Skycar M400 is a prototype personal VTOL aircraft which is powered by four pairs of in-tandem Wankel rotary engines, and is approaching the problems of satellite navigation incorporated in the proposed small aircraft transportation system. Mahler also advises that, currently, the Skycar would only be allowed to fly from airports and heliports. The Skycar M400 has tiny wheels and no road capability at all. Mahler has been developing VTOL craft since the late 1960s, but no Mahler vehicle has ever achieved free flight out of ground effect. The proposed Auto Volante or model has an all electric version powered by Altair nano batteries. The Splorer PX200 is a French project of single seater VTOL aircraft without rotating airfoil, relying on the Cohen effect and using an array of small jet engines called thermoreactors embedded within tilt wings body. Announced in 2007, the project has been funded by the Government of France and is now supported by various aerospace firms. A full-scale drone is scheduled for flight at Paris Air Show 2017, followed by the commercialization of a single-seater flying car in the years after. The Skyrider X2R is a prototype of a flying car developed by Macro Industries, Inc. It is lighter than the Mahler Skycar which has never successfully flown untethered. Also notable is the rotable aircraft PALV-1, which is an autogyro or gyrocopter that can be taken to the road, too. Modern Developments Design Z. Arrow and Kitty Hawk Corporation are developing flying cars. Engineering Economics Safety Popular Culture Where's my flying car? Flying cars are planned to enter Russian market in 2018. A practical flying car would have to be capable of safely taking off, flying and landing throughout heavily populated urban environments. However, to date, no vertical takeoff and landing vehicle has ever demonstrated such capabilities. To produce such an aircraft would require a propulsion system that is quiet, to avoid noise complaints, and has non-exposed rotors so it could be flown safely in urban environments. Additionally, for such aircraft to become airborne, they would require very powerful engines which would create huge and concentrated downdrafts, 
a bad idea in an urban environment. Many types of aircraft technologies and form factors have been suggested, such as duct fan and tilt rotor vehicles, but most previous designs have suffered from problems. Duct fan aircraft tend to easily lose stability and have difficulty traveling greater than 30 40 knots, while tilt rotors, such as the V 22 Osprey, are generally noisy. Due to the requirement of propulsion that is both small and powerful, the cost of producing a flying car would be very high and estimated by some as much as $10 million. In addition, the flying car's energy efficiency would be much lower compared to conventional cars and other aircraft. Optimal fuel efficiency for airplanes is at high speeds and high altitudes, while flying cars would be used for shorter distances at higher frequency, lower speeds, and lower altitude. For both environmental and economic reasons, flying cars would be an enormous use of resources. Fiction Although statistically, commercial flying is much safer than driving, unlike commercial planes personal flying cars might not have as many safety checks and their pilots would not be as well trained. Humans already have problems with the aspect of driving in two dimensions, adding in the up and down aspect would make driving or flying as it would be, much more difficult, however, this problem might be solved via the sole use of self-flying and self-driving cars. In mid-air collisions and mechanical failures, the aircraft could fall from the sky or go through an emergency landing resulting in deaths and property damage. In addition, poor weather conditions, such as low air density, lightning storms and heavy rain, snow or fog could be challenging and affect the aircraft's aerodynamics. The flying car was and remains a common feature of conceptions of the future, including imagined near futures such as those of the 21st century. Complaints of the non-existence of flying cars have become nearly idiomatic as expressions of disappointment in the failure of the present to measure up to the glory of past predictions. In 1999 the U.S. journalist Gail Collins noted, Here we are, less than a month until the turn of the millennium, and what I want to know is, what happened to the flying cars? We're about to become Americans of the 21st century. People have been predicting what we'd be like for more than 100 years, and our accoutrements don't entirely live up to expectations. Our failure to produce flying cars seems like a particular betrayal since it was so central to our image. As a result, flying cars have been referred to jokingly with the question where's my flying car? emblematic of the supposed failure of modern technology to match futuristic visions that were promoted in earlier decades. Aired on January 8, 1998, Seinfeld's 167th episode, The Dealership, featured George and Jerry complaining about the non-existence of the flying cars. Jerry says, it's like we're living in the 50s here. A 2001 IBM television commercial featured Avery Brooks complaining, It is the year 2000, but where are the flying cars? I was promised flying cars. I don't see any flying cars. Why? 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 Live Action Films Comedian Louis Black had a similar routine early in the decade, in which he says, this new millennium sucks. It's exactly the same as the old millennium. You know why? No flying cars. The Flying Car was a comedy short film written by Kevin Smith in 2002 for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. It featured Dante Hicks and Randall Graves stuck in traffic, discussing the lengths to which a man might go to obtain such a vehicle. Live-action television series 
In 2008, Onion News Network's 245th episode, titled Mean Automakers-Nation's Hope for Flying Cars, featured the Onion's anchor Brandon Armstrong humorously arguing about the feasibility and existence of flying cars with representatives from General Motors, Toyota, and Ford. The flying car has been depicted in many works of fantasy and science fiction. Animation Video games Literature Notes